Greetings, dear friends. I'm Warren Lutzman in Dallas, Texas, sitting in my office, ready to talk to you about Jesus Christ. I hope you're listening today. I hope you've got a Bible handy, because everything I have to tell you is already written in the Bible. And if you just take the Bible like it's written, like an old King James Version, you'd be so much better off and you'd get ahead so much quicker. Because, as I've often said, uh, maybe being humorous, but I've often said that the Holy Spirit even uses the old King James Bible. So, whatever you have, get your Bible, and let's look at what is taking place. We're in the 15th verse of the 5th chapter of Romans. That verse says, But as the offense, so also the free gift. The offense. What's the offense? That's what Adam did. What's the free gift? That's Christ. For if through the offense of one, many be dead. That's what happens when you don't come to Jesus Christ, you're going to be dead in your soul and your, and your spirit. Much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abounded unto many. I was on the subject in the last broadcast of talking to you about how God at the cross was given the right to the death of his only begotten son to make a radical change in his plan. You say, oh, there's no such thing. It's always been noted. Uh, that's people talking that don't know their Bible. There are at least three times in Paul's epistles where he says what he's given them has never been known before, never been spoken of before, never been written of before. So that means that there's not something in the Old Testament that could have brought all this about, this business of Christ being our life. There's not something Jesus of Nazareth brought out, except he did make a statement. And Jesus is always crossing the line from law back to grace. And he did it on the occasion. He said, I come that you might have life, a more abundant life. Were they getting it at that time? No. That's what he had come to do. Give them a more abundant life. But you know what? They didn't accept Jesus. In fact, they helped to kill him. So God knew that the time had come that the one great thing he had in his mind before he created this world was to put every creature that trusted him in Christ. Every one of them. He already had it made up. Chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world was laid. Ephesians 1 and 4. He had already made his mind up about that. Way back before the world was created, he just had it hidden. Hey, scripture says it was hidden in God. God got a right to do that. God got a right to do anything he wants to. He doesn't have to fit your code, your ideas, your morality, or your un unbelievable sense of humanity. God was going to take these humans and put another life in them. Christ in them. Their hope of glory. Why? Because with all the great people that walked through the Old Testament, very few of them pleased God. Very few of them. Those people be used by God, I guess, back during the millennium. They'll still be under the law. They'll still be teaching things that are contrary to the cross. But God at the cross took the liberty in the death of Jesus Christ to have the right to place Christ in every believing sinner. Christ in them. When Paul got a hold of this message, and he's the only one that did get a hold of it, not any other writer in the New Testament, not anybody in the ministry of Jesus Christ knew it, and not anybody in the Old Testament could write about it. Nobody could ever tell the story that's in Colossians 1 where he says that everybody who believes on Christ receives the great mystery, Christ in you as your hope of glory. He got it fixed like that. 
It's still like that. It isn't going to change. My simple fact is that unless people know Christ lives in them, I don't know if they'll get into the Father's house. I am burdened and troubled over the fact that 90% of Christians are still bound by some parts of the law. Most of the preachers in pulpits today seldom ever mention to the believer that you have a new life. Let's talk about it. I'm not going to talk to you anymore about you straightening out your old life because that's something that died at the cross. You were crucified with Christ. Killed. You no longer lived as you. You weren't supposed to. And that's why some people won't come to God. They, they think they've got a good life already. They think they're perfect already. They think they're religious already. And they are. But they don't have Christ. They don't have Christ. And if Christ be not in you, you've got no hope of glory. You getting that? There is no hope of glory for you if you don't have Christ in you. One man, Adam, brought the most grievous sin humanity now has. It's the sin that's passed on from a mom and dad to a little baby. The sin nature. That must be changed, for God will no longer tolerate Adam's works in human beings that come to live in his house. So the first great thing that takes place when you accept Jesus as your Savior is to get rid of the one man, Adam, his influence, his lying, his stealing, his hopelessness, all of those things become parts of human life. And to get rid of them is not a simple thing. It's not really a simple thing. You've got to learn about Jesus. Oh, it's a simple thing getting saved. Anybody can go to a church that preaches the Bible and get saved because that's what salvation is. It's a Bible thing. It's something that's in the Bible and so many people interpret it, misinterpret it, and have some other... You'd be surprised how many places you could go and have a kind of salvation right out of the Bible which hardly anybody else has anything to do with. You get that? You could find a kind of salvation that fits you. You don't need the cross. You don't need the things of the Lord working in your heart and life. You mustn't you must think like that. To think like that is to be thinking about the thing that God put His Son on the cross to get rid of. You say, God put Him there? Yep. That was known by Old Testament saints. That was known by people who had the human gospel, earthly gospel, in the days that Jesus was on this earth. They could have known. They could have known his death. They could have known what his death meant. But they didn't. His closest followers among the twelve didn't want him to die. They, they, Peter openly rebuked them for even talking like that. You can't talk about... Uh, talk about dying. you got to lead the world now that's all coming to you. The, the, the message is coming out of you. You're going to be the one that will heal the sick and cast out devils, raise the dead. You can't talk about dying. Of course, Peter didn't know. The Old Testament scrolls would have told them that he was going to die, that he was going to be killed, that he was going to be murdered by, by certain friends and and enemies when he was on this earth. You understand that? You gotta understand that sort of thing. Christianity is not gonna get to you without the Apostle Paul teaching you. You're not gonna be a Christian. You can go to a church that's called a Christian church. You can go to listen to a preacher who claims to be a Christian preacher. 
You can buy the books, all of which mostly are written by people who are Christians. But you'll never become a Christian until you understand Paul's message. The Holy Spirit will help you. Your own Bible searching will help you. They were called Berean at one place because they searched the scriptures daily to see whether or not the things that were being taught were of God. <laughs> can do that today. Couldn't do that today. That would close many a church door if the people started searching the scripture for themselves. But I've got to tell you that that's the only way they're ever going to come to real truth. Truth doesn't come from me, who've been preaching the Bible for many years. Truth comes through the Holy Spirit. I might say it exists. In fact, that's what my preaching is all about. I'm here to tell you only one thing, and that is another life exists for you, and that's the Christ life. You don't have to keep living the same drudgery Life. You may have worked yourself up to think this is the best it's ever been. I'm a happy, I'm a peaceful person. I don't need anything else. But you're going to go to hell. You're not looking out for what it is you really need. You need Jesus. When you get Jesus, he has millionaires, he has billionaires, he has many rich people, he has many prominent people. He's got all kinds of people which was God's intention that Christ would be in all of them. And these people must be at the work of evangelizing through their own life, Jesus Christ. If they don't do that, then their tenure on this earth is being wasted. Being wasted. I see wasted lives on every hand. Good people. Educated people, famous people, I see them as alive without Christ. I'm able to see them with the life of Christ because that's going to come out sooner or later. Sooner or later. We've had presidents who in interview would outrightly say, I am a born again Christian. We've had people in high places of power that would say, I follow Jesus because I know Paul's message. can't really follow Jesus today unless you know Paul's message. And that's why he says on uh, approximately 10 different times in different ways, follow me as I follow Christ. Do it like I do it. Understand it like I understand it. He was so bold that he said everybody that follows Christ must have the same gospel. Boy, how out of line could a human being be as Paul was. But that's what God wanted. You know what God would like to have today? Probably more than anybody else. All of these people that say they love his son. They love Jesus. And they want to do their best for Jesus. Need to strip their doctrines down until the doctrine of who they are in Christ is the only thing left standing. Somebody says to me, why do you just preach these things all the time? Because that's what the scriptures are talking about. This 15th verse of Romans 5 is a very prominent scripture. It talks about what Adam did. talks about what Jesus did. Just one man at a time. One man brought sin upon all of us. One man, Christ, took sin away from us. It's in the book. I can't read hardly any scriptures that do not point to this. Because if it doesn't point to the cross, if the cross is not in the center of the message, then you're not getting the truth. What is it that makes people free? Certain kind of doctrine, certain kind of religion, certain kind of churchanity they're in? No. What makes people free is the truth. The truth. One scripture says, 
You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's to the person that accepts Christ. They got the truth. They're free. But it also says that the multitudes that reject Jesus Christ will face that again. You could have had the truth. You could have known. A lot of people rejecting Christ know what the truth is. They know what the truth is about. Well, this, this 15th verse must be dealt with. Maybe again, I'll be back on the same place. Listen to me. Get somebody to come in here with you. Because our world is in such a mess today. If you don't have Christ as your life, you don't have life. Think about it. See you at the next broadcast. Bye-bye.